Today we are doing lesson 10-6 on secants, tangents, and angle measures. This is from the McGraw-Hill geometry book. So we're going to talk about intersections that are on the circle or inside the circle today. A line that intersects a circle in exactly two points is called a secant. So, so far we've covered the word chord and a word, a chord has the intersections on the circle, but it stops at the circle. So the end points are on the circle. A secant is a chord that basically keeps on going, okay? So there's two theorems we're gonna work on today. The first theorem we're going to learn is if two secants or chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the measure of the angle formed is one half the sum of the measure of the arcs intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. It sounds kind of wordy, but I promise you it's not that bad. So if we're looking for angle one, it's going to be the sum of its intercepted arc. So there is the intercepted arc to one and its vertical angle arc. So the vertical angle arc. Now, I know in this theorem, it shows one half times the sum. I prefer to take the sum and divide by two. You will get the same answer. So in this case, as they have it on the paper, if we were looking for angle one, we would actually figure out what the measure of PR is. So the measure of PR, the way it has there. We would add the measure of QS and we would divide it by two, okay? So we're gonna have some practice with those. That's two secants that intersect inside a circle. So we'll go ahead and go down to question number one, which is two secants that intersect inside a circle. We have to find the two arcs. So I have the first arc right here and the vertical angle arc, which is right here. I'm gonna add those up and I will divide by two. So the measure of angle one is going to be equal to the sum of the arcs divided by two. Okay? So in your calculator, you can either do it as one big equation or you can do 92 divided by two. The measure of angle one is going to be 46 degrees. Now we're going to move on to question number two, which is also two secants. But this time, they gave you the angle in between the secants. So when we work out this question, we're going to set it up, but we're going to solve it a little bit differently. So we're looking for, this time we're looking for the intercepted arc. So we're looking for GH. So this time, the angle that we're looking at is going to be 45. They already gave it to us. So 45 degrees is equal to, well, the intercepted arcs are 28 degrees and arc GH that we don't know. Okay, so 28 plus GH divided by two. That's a GH, not a six H. Okay. So now we want to get that arc GH by itself because that is what we are solving for. So in order to get rid of a divide by two, we're going to multiply by two on both sides. So we get 90 is equal to 28 plus arc GH. How do we get arc GH by itself? Well, we subtract 28 from both sides and we're left with 62 degrees. Here's GH. Again, to review that theorem that we did here, okay? 
If the two secant or chords intersect in the inside of the circle, basically, the measure of the angle formed is one half the sum of the arcs intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. Okay. That's what we've done for one and two. Now we're going to go on to the second theorem. Okay, The second theorem, so on 10.5, we learned about tangents, and the tangent line intersects the circle at only one point. So in this case, x, y is your tangent, okay? And then t, v is our secant. And there's a formula we're going to use here, okay? If a secant and a tangent intersect at the point of tangency, then the measure of each angle formed is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. So if I'm looking for the arc and I'll go ahead and highlight this in blue. If I'm looking at this big arc down here, I'm going to compare it to this angle right there. And the angle is one half the measure. So you can either multiply by one half or divide by two. And the other side, this arc TV, if you take half of it, you get that angle right there. Okay, that's how they're going to correspond to each other. So now we go on to question three on our paper. Question three is looking for angle three. So we have this intercepted arc on the outside that's 220. Well, how do we get to that angle inside? Well, all we have to do is divide by two, okay? So angle three, the angle is equal to the intercepted arc divided by two. So angle three is equal to 110 degrees. Okay, next we're gonna move to question four, okay? This time it wants R, the measure of angle RT. Well, it only has the two letters, so the arc measure is this bottom section. Okay. So we're looking for right here. So this time they gave us the angle. We know the angle is equal to so the angle is equal to the arc measure divided by 2. Okay, so I want to get the arc measure by itself. Opposite of dividing by 2 is multiplying by 2. So multiply by 2 on both sides. You get 148 degrees equals arc RT. Next question we're going to is question number five, okay? So we have circle W here and we're looking for five, which is not part, it's not in between the 90 and the 130. So what we're gonna have to do here is I'm gonna actually have to find the angle that's between the 90 and the 130. So I'm gonna have to look for this piece first, okay? What I think about is these two pieces go together. And then we'll figure out the linear pair to that angle, and that'll be angle five. So if we add the arc measures, 90 plus 130, and divide by two, we have the angle that is in between those arc measures. So 90 plus 130 divided by two is 110. But that's not our answer. That's right here. Well, angle five forms a straight line. It's called a linear pair. A linear pair has 180 degrees. So we have 110 plus angle five equal 180. How do we get angle five by itself? We subtract 110 from both sides. Angle five is equal to 70 degrees. And the last question on the front of our notes, angle six, okay? Question six, angle six. So it's a two-part question again, okay? We know a circle has 360 degrees. I need to relate the angle that it's looking to, which is right here. I need to relate it to its intercepted arc, but neither one of those have numbers. But I do have 160 degrees on the left of my circle. 
So to figure out that intercepted arc on the other side, I would do 360 minus 160. It's 200 degrees. So this outside piece is 200 degrees. Now how do I get to the angle? 200 divided by 2. Angle 6 equals 100 degrees. Okay. Pause and rewind wherever you need to. We're going to go ahead and go to the back of our notes. Okay, the back of our notes now. The back of our notes is what happens when they intersect outside the circle, okay? Here are the rules to this. If secants and tangents intersect outside a circle, so you can either have two secants, two tangents, or one of each that intersect outside the circle. They form an angle whose measure is related to those intercepted arcs. If two secants, a secant and a tangent, or two tangents intersect in the exterior circle, then the measure of the angles formed is one half the difference of the intercepted arcs. Again, all these equations say one half. Don't forget that it's exactly the same as dividing by two. Preferably, I'm gonna write it as divide by two. So on every single one of these, what I think about is dividing this by two instead of multiplying by the one half, okay? So these intercepted arcs, again, it doesn't matter if it's two secants, two tangents, and one of each. This is an arc, this is an arc, and here is that exterior angle. So I'm gonna subtract the intercepted arcs. Now, I don't want negative numbers here, so you'll make sure that the larger arc goes first, the smaller arc goes second, divided by 2 equals to that exterior angle. Now, sometimes they'll give us that exterior angle and expect us to find one of the intercepted arcs, but I'm still going to set it up the same way, okay? And again, this works the same. If you have a tangent and a secant, it is still the large arc minus the small arc, divided by two equals to the angle outside, okay? So let's get on to some practice questions here. Okay, question number one. So they start us off pretty basic. They say, hey, here are your intercepted arcs. We have the large intercepted arc. We have the small intercepted arc. If I divide it by two, I get this outside angle, which is angle one. Okay. So angle one is equal to 40, oops, apologize, 80 minus 40 divided by two. Angle one equals 20 degrees. And that's our answer. Now we're going to question number two. Okay. Question number two, you have a tangent and a secant. The same rules still apply. You're going to take the large arc minus the small arc, divide by two, and that should give you your exterior angle. So your answer is 40 degrees. Done. So I'm going to try to pick up pace a little bit here, okay? Um, two more, a few more questions to do here. They all get a little bit harder, though, because they all add things to them. On uh, number three, it is still the large arc minus the small arc divided by two. But if you notice, there's no number there for the small arc. But we know the whole circle is 360. These are two tangent lines, so we're not cutting through the circle at all. To find arc AD, I would do 360 minus 220. That smaller arc is 140. And now I can set up my equations. The large arc minus the small arc divided by 2. is going to be equal to my exterior angle. 
So angle three equals 40 degrees. Okay, question number four. This time they gave us the exterior angle, but I'm still going to set it up the same way. The large arc minus the small arc that I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and call this X so I can just use an X here. So the large arc minus the small arc, which is my answer, divided by two is equal to my exterior angle. Okay, so now I wanna get X by itself. First step is multiply by two on both sides. Then I subtract 70 from both sides. I have negative x equals negative 30. Now I'm going to divide by negative 1 on both sides to cancel out both the negatives, and the answer is 30 degrees. We have two more questions to do. So this time there's nothing on this problem. These are probably the most difficult to understand because we have they don't give us anything. All they gave us was the degrees on the outside. And it's wanting LN. What we do know is the whole circle is 360. So if I called this X, since that's what I'm looking for. If the whole circle is 360 and I take that X away, this outside piece is 360 minus X. So whatever X was, if X is 100, then it's 360 minus 100 but we don't know what it is. So I know that one side is 360 minus X, the other side is X. I'm still going to set it up the same way. The large arc minus the small arc divided by two equals my exterior angle. I'm gonna go ahead and combine like terms and multiply by two in the same step. So I then have 360 minus 2x equals 100. Subtract 360 from both sides. And divide by negative 2. The answer is that is 130. So the measure of LN is 130 degrees. And the last question of the day. Question number six. A lot of different numbers going on here. Not as complicated as it seems. Okay. To figure out the missing in P first, we know the circle has 360. So I'm going to add up what we already have there. We have 110. We have 100. We have 80. If we add them all up, that is 290 degrees. So I'm going to subtract from 360. So 360 minus 290. That missing piece inside the circle is 70 degrees. Set up the same way the large arc minus the small arc. Okay, sorry. Okay. 100 minus 70. Divided by 2 is equal to my outside angle, and the answer is 15 degrees. So angle V is equal to 15 degrees. Okay, that's all for this lesson. If you like these videos, please subscribe to this channel where we will be posting some more videos.